Becoming a data scientist is not easy, but there were some really useful habits that I found that really helped me in my journey, which I plan to share with you today. Let's get into it. Not overthinking things and immediately starting to learn is by far the best way to go and pretty much everybody says this. For example, I always mention that there's no such thing as the best course. Sure, some courses might be better than others, but likely the majority of the most popular ones are all pretty much the same and they'll teach you the same things, particularly at the beginner level. Instead of taking hours or days pondering over what course you should take, you're better off just simply picking one and getting started. That time you spent thinking about the best course could have spent actually learning, which is much more valuable. In a similar vein, don't spend too much time thinking about the project you should make or trying to find the perfect project. Just find an idea that you like and just get started. The point is you can always do another project later or just stop halfway through. What you're after with projects is the idea of learning and developing your skills. It doesn't really matter what the project outcome really is. My main bit of advice to become more action oriented is to time block your research and thinking times. Basically have like a limit of how long you're gonna spend thinking about a project, a course, etc. And after that limit's over, then you have to start working on it. To me, the most important habit is consistent and continual learning. I am sure by now you have all heard the idea that improving 1% every day will lead to exponential growth over time. If you improved 1% every single day, you will roughly be 38 times better than you were at the start. However, if you declined 1% every single day for a year, you would pretty much be near zero which goes to show you that making small, consistent improvements, particularly when it comes to learning something, can really compound over time, and your knowledge will be so much greater than it was at the start. I know this saying is very cliche, but I really think it's true, and you should really leverage this to your advantage. Personally, every day I dedicate some time to learning and upskilling myself. That could be me learning more about ML theory, or doing a coding challenge, or even reading an article online. It can really be that small, but the point is every day I'm doing something that furthers my data science knowledge. Another platform I've been using quite a lot recently for continual learning is LearnSQL.com, who are kindly sponsoring this video. LearnSQL.com have over 65 interactive courses and tracks on the website in a variety of SQL flavors, including PostgreSQL and MySQL. These courses contain hands-on exercises with real world problems and it's entirely web-based. They also have an initial SQL skill assessment that you can take that will rank your current SQL abilities. They will then recommend you courses, resources and tracks which are most appropriate to your current level and areas that you can improve upon. So it's very suitable whether you're a beginner or expert. Some of you may not know, but one of the founders of SQL, Edgar Frank Codd, published his original work on relational databases 54 years ago in June whilst working at IBM. In celebration of this 54 years of SQL, LearnSQL.com are running a big promotion on their All Forever package. The All Forever package gives you lifetime access to all of the courses, tracks and resources on the platform and also to any further courses that may be released in the future. You can get all of this for only $150, which is 75% off the typical price. I will leave a link in the description below in case you want to check it out. It would really help if you had a roadmap or at least an end goal into what you're trying to achieve. For example, sometimes my goals are just, I want to learn neural networks and I want to implement a neural network in PyTorch. Again, this goal is quite vague and is very basic, but it serves as purpose of giving me a clear direction of how I'm learning things and what I am learning. Roadmaps are often better because they're pretty much like a self-contained syllabus. They'll contain all the things you need to know, how to learn them, and all the best resources to learn those things. So you don't have to worry too much about finding kind of what's next, how do I learn this, what's the best way to learn this. It's all self-contained, so you can just focus simply on learning the stuff. I followed roadmaps when I was learning about data science, deep learning, and time series. And they really benefited me because I would stop wasting time thinking like, what's next, how do I learn this? Everything was self-contained, and I really improved my progress and how quickly I learned things. There are so many roadmaps out there that you can follow, and I've even created ones myself. 
I'll link on screen here some of them that I recommend you check out. A common problem in today's society is the idea of comparison. Typically online, people will only show their highlights and their best things. I'm guilty of this too. And so it's easy to think that people are so far ahead of you and doing much better than you in their lives. Without getting too cringy, you should only really compare yourself against yourself. There is a video I really like where Matthew McConaughey wins Best Actor at the Oscars in 2014. And in his acceptance speech, he talks about how his hero is him in 10 years, which is a really good attitude to have because all you're trying to do is improve upon yourself. It's futile comparing yourself to other people because there's so many factors and environments that really kind of affect people's success and failures. Data science is a field filled with some of the most intelligent, innovative and smartest people in the world. So chances are you will never be the greatest data scientist of all time. This is not to discourage you, but to show that just comparing yourself and ranking yourself against other data scientists is completely futile and you just shouldn't do it. And the last habit is that remember that great things take time. Data science is a big field. It crosses over maths, statistics, coding, just so many areas. And you can't learn it in three months like some of these videos and articles may tell you. I've been working as a data scientist now for about three years and I only feel like I'm still scratching the surface of the area because it's so big and there's so much to explore. So if you're a couple months into your data science journey or you're working your way through a roadmap and things don't seem to be going in or you're kind of struggling to learn, don't worry too much about it. I mean, you're only a couple of months in and mastering any field takes a lot of time. There are literally three year bachelor degrees dedicated data science now, which goes to show you how much learning you need to put in in order to become really good in this field. So that couple of months that you may not be learning much or you're thinking you're not learning much, I promise you, if you dedicate a few years, then you'll be amazed at where you are. For example, I'm currently looking to learn about the deployment and engineering side of machine learning. And I'm under no illusion that this is gonna take me at least a couple of years to fully get comfortable with. And I'm totally fine with that. If you want more data science tips like this, then I run a weekly newsletter called Additional Data. I send it every Monday morning and it's all about my thoughts and experiences as a practicing data scientist. If that sounds interesting, then I'll leave a link in the description below for you to check out.